Good. John, we've known each other for quite some time now, but what I'm really interested in is how did you actually come into Qigong? Um, I think I've been searching for quite a while uh, for sort of answers. I guess, I guess the basis of my practice is a spiritual practice. Um, my father was a minister in the church, and the last thing he said to me on his deathbed was, you need to find the thing that works for you. Um, he, he said, you know, the church works for him, but he recognizes it doesn't work for everybody. You need to go and find it. And so I started searching around and I explored Buddhism. I explored paganism. I explored Taoism. I explored, explored a, a number of different religions. Along the way, I got interested in healing and I uh, trained in two white light healing systems, the second one being Reiki. And it was the Reiki teacher who, when he met me, said, you know what, you're going to hate this. He said, you're a Qigong person. And I was like, well, what's a Qigong person? And he showed me a little bit of Qigong and he trained me in Reiki. And actually what I found was that the Qigong just kept coming for me. I I mean, you can probably tell I'm always waving my arms around. I always like to have movement with what I do. And so I think that's what he picked up on. So then it was just that case of once you've heard about something, you keep spotting it. And so after training initial or after the initial sort of piece, which was actually one of the Shaolin styles that I was taught at, right at the very beginning. But please don't question me on it. I remember. Uh, no, actually, none of it. Um, I then trained in a Tibetan Buddhist style of Qigong, um, which was an astonishing system to play with because I'd already got an understanding of Tibetan Buddhism and now it just got so much richer. Um, but the teacher was not based in the UK and it was difficult for me to train. And so I then trained in an elemental, a contemporary elemental Qigong, which is my first teacher training. I studied Buchi, I studied Hua Gong. I went to the normal places that you seem to go to in this country. Then spent time with an amazing guy called Roy, um, who trained primal animal Qigong, an Australian guy. Uh, and then I met Jineng. And it was one of those things that up until I'd met Jineng, it felt as if the systems weren't quite giving me what I was looking for. Um, I feel as if there's a mix in, in, in every system of Qigong, there's a cocktail between the martial, the medical and the spiritual practice. And you need to find the system that the mix works for you. And within the Jineng system, I found the, I found the cocktail to be to my taste. So I then was able to train in, in Jineng. And I've been very fortunate in the sense that um, I've been training with some of the top guys in the world, been training in China, and they've also been coming over uh, to stay with me. And then we've been running training from the UK with them. So, yes, that's that's how I got into it. And that's that's where it sort of got to at the moment. So, John, what would you say the uh, the greatest benefits you've had from your Qigong training? You, you know what? I hate this question. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I absolutely hate it. I work with so many people or I work with so many people over the years who have used Qigong to overcome cancer or to do amazing, astonishing things. I've never done anything that amazing with it. Um, but actually, the thing that I've noticed looking back is the way it's just been constantly there helping me grow and develop and learn as I've as, as I've uh, as I've gone through life up to this point um i think there's something very powerful about the integration of qigong into everyday life i think that when qigong gets focused into a particular aim so if i if if i had a particular diagnosis for example that you know i would have a very focused view of this is what i'm doing with my qigong but when it becomes an integrated practice within your daily life it changes everything and it changes it quite subtly and you don't necessarily notice. Um, I was asked this question about what benefits um, you experience from it uh, last year sometime. And I relayed the story of um, being invited up to one of the big London um, clubs, not nightclubs, uh, one of the it was it was actually the National Liberal Club. Um, to meet uh, the person who is now King Charles's health advisor and talk to him about integrative medicine. Uh, and we sat and had lunch together. And I was thinking, would I have been able to do that 15 years ago, 20 years ago? And the answer is probably no. It's not about self-confidence. 
um, what Qigong has given me is the understanding that everybody is, every, everyone is just a person. We can meet anybody where they are. We don't need to limit ourselves in any way in the conversations that we have. Um, and I think that's one of the biggest gifts that I've got, the ability to actually communicate with people, uh, to learn from people and to allow allow things to be held lightly enough that I feel as if everything is just like, wow, look at that. Isn't that amazing? It's a, it, it's a fantastic cure, uh, tool to develop curiosity. Um, and I wish I could give you something more spectacular, but I really can't. That is spectacular. So, John. What do, you, what do you love about Qigong? Um, I, I, I have a tendency to think that as, as you go through things, they should feel simpler. Um, and I think that's been my attitude all the way through the training because of my sort of reading before doing Qigong. Uh, and I was quite engaged with the idea of Taoism and there's sort of an underlying simplicity that the thing that's caught me is that although on occasions Qigong dives into ridiculous levels of complexity about accuracy of movement or detail of theory, ultimately it always comes back to simplicity. And it's the simple ideas, it's the simple movements, it's the sim it's the simplicity with which you can approach things that, that I've learned from Qigong that I, that I love about it. And it also makes it really accessible. Um, it means that when you're actually working with people from all kinds of different backgrounds, when you strip out all of the extraneous stuff that sits there about, you know, well, I must wear this particular color or I must stand in this particular posture, you can find simple little techniques that exist within the practice that will be transformational for anybody. Um, and that, is, that I think, is, is amazing to find a system that it can get as complicated as you need to, but actually the simplicity means that it can be as as accessible as well probably more accessible than any other system I've, I've come across and I'm sure there's people watching who've studied systems that have that level of simplicity within them have that potential but for me Qigong is the system that I've discovered this is the system that I love and it's because of that ease it's because of that simplicity